Are you afraid of growing old? What is it about growing old that really makes you afraid? Is it becoming disabled? Is it losing everyone you care about? Is it losing your looks, your youth, your vitality? What is it about growing older? Because you know what? We're all in this together. Every single person on this planet, if they live long enough, they get old. So you're not alone. To some degree, we've all had this fear of growing older. It's a normal fear. It really is. And we all inevitably have to go through it the longer we live. And so the trade-off is you can live a long life, but you're going to spend a certain percentage of that being old. I mean, that's just the bottom line. We're going to explore that today, and I'm going to share with you some ways in which you can reduce some of the fear about growing older. There's some things you can do to overcome some of that fear and some of that concern or anxiety or however it's manifesting in you. Experts have talked about the fact that there's two main things that tend to concern us about growing older. The first thing is concern about our own well-being. In other words, will we be able to be physically able to do things? Will we be able to cognitively be able to do things? In other words, will we get dementia or not? That's a big concern for a lot of people. The second category is really about concerns about are we going to be alone as we get older? In other words, the people we knew, are people going to leave? Are people going to die before us? Are we going to end up alone? And those are the two main areas of concern people have. So what do you picture getting older looking like? I guess that's the bottom line. What do you picture it as? It is important to not catastrophize it and not to think like, oh, I'm going to end up in a wheelchair or nursing home or whatever. It is important not to do that because you don't know what's going to happen. And as I've mentioned in other videos that I've done, very often the thing we worry about so much never happens. The thing you obsess about and worry that's going to happen to you often never happens. So better not to go down that road mentally for yourself and get yourself freaked out. I mean, it is true that the older you get, it's not like it's going to keep getting better. <laughs> I mean, you just you're going to age, okay? I'm facing that myself at this point. And I know in another 10 years or 20 years, if I live that long, it's going to get worse in some ways. But I also avoid catastrophizing it because I think it's really important to be realistic, but also hopeful. To be realistic, but also hopeful about how you're going to function as the time goes on. So like many of you out there, I'm sure, depending on your age, I didn't think much about getting older when I was young. I really didn't. I, part of that was a unique reason for myself in that I had already survived death, so I actually didn't even think I was going to live to be the age I am now. I didn't think I was going to live that long, honestly. I mean, I had died at a year of age, and they had to bring me back. I basically was near death in when I was in the Peace Corps, and uh, I also had some other issues, medical issues, that caused me to have problems a little later on. So... The thing is, is that I really didn't think I was going to have a long life. I mean, I have longevity in my family. I knew that genetically there was a predisposition to that, but I didn't know. I really just didn't think about it. I didn't think about getting older. And some people don't think about getting older because they're just in denial. They, they think, oh, I'm just going to focus on now, which is fine. If you want to just focus on now when you're young, that's great. It will, it, age will catch up to you soon enough. <laughs> it is inevitable that way. But anyway, I, I just really didn't think about it. So is it a surprise to me to sit here at almost 69 years of age and feel relatively still capable mentally and also physically? I mean, yeah, I have some limitations physically, but I'm able to walk. You know, today I walked home from about a mile and a quarter from the store. And, you know, I usually try to walk every single day. So I'm glad. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful I can still do that. And I try to do what I can for my health. I don't smoke. I've never smoked. I hardly have ever drank in my life. 
Um, the only thing I have to really clean up is my sugar habit and need to lose more weight. That's the main thing. I figure if I lose more weight in my life, I'll probably be doing pretty well health-wise. Now, of course, anything can happen at any time to anyone. So there's no guarantees. I mean, you can do, I mean, I know all of you out there have heard stories of people who were on health food kicks and did everything health-wise for themselves and they still got cancer. That is still a thing. That is, there is no way you can 100% prevent that. There just isn't. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And it's, sometimes there's a genetic component to getting cancer and sometimes it's just random. And there's really no 100% way to prevent it. Anyone that tells you there is, is not telling you the truth. It just, there isn't. So there's always an unknown factor in certain diseases um, that we never really know if we're going to get something or not. The surprising thing for me, though, is that I don't, I stress much less now about getting older than I did probably when I was younger. In other words, I couldn't even imagine what it was like to be old when I was young. And I'm sure you guys feel the same out there, those of you who are on the younger side. But now that I'm older, I find I stress much less about it. I don't know. I guess I just feel like, well, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, at least so far, knock on wood. Um, <laughs> and uh, I also don't worry about death as much as I used to when I was in my teens or even 20s. I used to worry, I think, a lot more about death. I think my concern at that point was that I was going to end up dying young and not really have a full life. But I've had a life. I've had a lot of life. In fact, I've had a lot of things in life I'd rather not have gone through. But <laughs> I've had all of it, good, bad, and different. And uh, the thing is, is that I don't feel cheated really out of anything. So there's a lot less stress about that, even though I'm a lot closer to death than I've ever been. And every single day I get a day older, I will be even that much closer. But I don't worry about it. I don't focus on it. It will come soon enough. It will come when it's my time, basically. And worrying about it at this point is kind of ridiculous. So that's how I put that in perspective. So let's talk now about what are some habits, some tools you can use that will reduce some of the angst about getting older. So these are really five habits that you can use to deal with the idea of aging. And um, I find them useful. The first one that I really want to talk about is lose the vanity. Okay, lose the freaking vanity because the point is you're not going to stem the tide of aging. Your face is going to age, your body's going to age. And you know what? The most important thing is you have to learn to be okay with that. You have to learn to be okay with that. Yes, if you're really wealthy and you can afford all the plastic surgery in the world, you can probably stem the tide of that to some degree, but then people will look at you and they will say, oh, that person's had plastic surgery. And, and the thing is, there's always problems with some plastic surgery. You can have a botched plastic surgery job. So uh, I know my mother did. So that's why, I, that's why I'm speaking to this whole vanity idea. My mother was a very vain person. She was a very beautiful woman. She, uh, you know, could not handle the idea of getting older. And she could not handle the idea of her face aging. And so she had a facelift when she was only in her early 50s. The problem was it was a botched job. And they damaged a nerve in her face. And so what happened is she looked like a stroke survivor. She had a drooping side of her face that eventually over time, the nerves grew back and whatever. So after maybe 10, 15 years, it was okay. But here was this person that she was so obsessed with her looks and so obsessed with the idea of staying youthful that she ruined her looks. She ruined her looks. And, and that's even happened, to, I've seen that happen to celebrities who can afford the best plastic surgery in the world. So vanity does not serve you. 
when you get older. It just doesn't. And so one of the ways that you make peace with getting older is just stop trying to look so young. Stop trying to look so young. By the time I was in my 50s, pretty much stopped wearing makeup. The only thing now is I put some, uh, some protective color stuff on my lips, partially because my lips get dry, but also it provides a little color. And I do, I put a little uh, color on my eyebrows at times because my eyebrows are practically invisible. And that just makes me feel weird when I look at myself, especially on camera. But that's all I do. Once in a great while, I might put on mascara. I've done that a few times, but I don't wear makeup otherwise. I just don't. What is the point? I'm not getting any younger. I'm not going to look like all of a sudden I'm a young person because I put on makeup. And the, the hair, uh, I allowed my hair to go gray when I was still in my 50s. And the only reason I even colored it up till then is I, I, came, I come from a family where we turned prematurely gray, but not all at once. And so what happened is I had weird places on my head that looked, I, frankly, I look like a skunk, okay? I had this white patch that was like down the middle of my head, but the rest of my hair wasn't like silver or whatever, and I looked like a freaking skunk. Now, that what did make me a bit self-conscious because that looked weird. So I did color my hair until I, may, I could determine that most of my hair was coming in you know, gray or silver. So, but once I, I was so happy the day I knew I wasn't going to color my hair anymore, I was so happy about that. I was like, I can do it finally. I can just let it be natural. And for me, and you know, that's fine. If you're older than I am and you still want to color your hair because it just makes you feel good, that's fine. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is if you're so vain that you think that all these things are making you look young, they're not. You now just look like an older person wearing hair color. That's what it looks like. It doesn't look like you're young. So there's, this is a big point at which I really think people need to learn to embrace their age. And that means the look of their age. You know, there's, there's, it's so freeing to just not worry about it anymore. To say it doesn't matter that I look old. It really doesn't matter. The second thing is focus on what you can still do. Don't be worrying and, and you know, obsessed with all the things you can't do. You know, maybe you were a long distance runner and by the time you're in your 70s, you really can't do that anymore. You got to let it go. Okay, take up bicycling or, or enjoy walking or whatever. But there are things that we lose that we used to be able to do that we just can't do anymore. And you've got to just not focus on that. You've got to not focus on the things that you can't do. And then kind of what goes along with this is the idea of the focus and put all your energies into things you still can do. And learn to enjoy, you know, maybe take up new hobbies. You know, I, I went into music again when I just three and a half years ago. I basically had played guitar when I was a teenager, came back to it, started playing guitar. I've written some songs. I've, I sing. Uh, that's all new in just the last three and a half years. It's it provided a whole new hobby for myself as I get older. So find something you can still do and really embrace it and make plans for what you can still accomplish. Make plans for what you can still accomplish because as long as your mind is good and your body is relatively functional, there's lots of stuff you can still do in your life. So make plans to do that. The third thing is don't catastrophize. I mentioned this earlier in the video. Don't catastrophize. Don't think too far down the road and freak yourself out with, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able, I'm going to be all decrepit when I'm 85 or something. Well, first of all, to be honest, you may not even make it to 85. But even if you do make it to 85, you're probably not going to be exactly what you think you're going to be at this point in time. So what is the point of catastrophizing it? Don't spend your energy on catastrophizing things that may never happen. 
So that is an important habit. The last two things I would say is learn to be happy and content doing nothing sometimes. Because as you get older, you're going to have more and more downtime. The thing I have really noticed over the last several years is that I just need more time to rest sometimes. Not necessarily, I'm not a nap taker, so it's not about taking naps, but I just need downtime. If I've gone out and done some things for two or three hours, I need to come back and just kind of, you know, sit down, relax, you know, do some things that don't require a lot of amount of physical energy and just regroup. You also, if you're not sleeping as well at night, you're going to feel more tired as you get older and, and sleep often gets interrupted as we get older. I have experienced this, especially in the last year or two off and on. So, uh, you know, you've got to make compensations for that. You've got to get enough rest. And sometimes that's not just sleep. That's just time you can just relax. And I did a whole video on the fact that I'm never bored. It's one of the strange superpowers I have, but I've been like this my whole life, even when I was a young person. I don't ever get bored. And that is going to serve me well as I get older, definitely, because there's a lot of times you're not going to be able to do much. You know, if you hit your 80s or 90s, I've, a lot of the people that live in the community I live in now that are in their 80s and 90s, they spend a lot of the day doing nothing. They really can't do a whole lot. They watch a lot of TV. They read books. They might, you know, crochet or knit or whatever, but they don't, they're not as active. They might go out for a small walk every day, but you just do less and less as you get older. That's just kind of the norm, unless you're blessed with tremendous, you know, uh, stamina and strength as you get older. Um, and you have to be okay with that. Be okay with that. The last thing is you've got to learn to laugh. You got to laugh about getting older because you know what? If you don't laugh, you're going to cry. <laughs> I did a short just the other day on the fact that you will wake up in the morning and something weird will have happened to you when you're asleep. You'll pull a muscle, you'll have something sore in your back or your leg and you're going, what, what happened? I was sleeping. But that's what happens as you get older. You get weird stuff like that where you don't know what happened and you just got to laugh about it because you cannot take it too seriously and you cannot take aging too seriously. It will be much easier for you if you can be light of spirit as you go into old age. And it, I tell you, I have a weird sense of humor. If you've been watching my videos a while, you know this. I have a strange, dark sense of humor sometimes. But you know what? I really know how to laugh at myself and laugh at age sometimes. It is important to do it because you know what? Of all the things in the world that we shouldn't take too seriously, it's about getting old. We just don't need to take that so seriously. It's inevitable Age just keeps rolling along the tracks like a freight train and we're along for the ride and we got to go where it goes, but we don't have to take it so seriously. So that is my ultimate tip that really helps with all the fear and the concern and the anxiety about getting older. So hopefully this has helped you today in some way. And, uh, I, you know, if you're getting older like me, if you're around the same age or even older than I am, hopefully you've learned these things already for yourself. If you're younger, I hope you're listening. I hope you took it to heart what I was talking about here because it will help you as you get older to just not be, fall into the trap of being worrying about everything you're losing, worry about, worrying about your looks being lost it's just not worth it. It's just not worth the anxiety of that. Embrace your age. Embrace your age no matter where you're at and enjoy it for what it is. And you know what? I'm never going to be as young as I am today. And so I think about that every single day. It's like, I'm never going to be this young again, so I'm going to enjoy it. It kind of helps me put the day in perspective. And uh, I know that that really helps me too. If you've made it this far in the video, I would ask that you please 
drop a like below and a comment if you would. Maybe you can relate to what I've talked about today, but it would really be great um, if you remember to like. And also, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel and you're still watching, please would you subscribe at this point in time. The little, it's really uh, cute. They, uh, the little thing will light up and stuff if you subscribe while you're watching this. So anyway, until next time, be well, be kind, keep moving forward. Take care. Bye.